Hello and welcome to the latest episode of The Board Masters with me, Chris Mullins, and today I am going to be unboxing the Deluxe Edition of Canvas Reflections. Do obviously have the Deluxe Edition Canvas new to me as well, but I'm not going to be unboxing that in this video because there are an abundance of beautiful Canvas unboxings out there already. And, you know, as I've said on the channel before, I try to avoid unboxing the older games now, even though Canvas is an absolutely beautiful game and probably does warrant an unboxing and same way Lost Ruins of Arnak does really but I still haven't got round to that one. Now Canvas Reflections is the new expansion to Canvas and you know if you want an indication of how gorgeous these games are the fact that they are designed with the box to be hung on the wall as a piece of artwork speaks volumes in my opinion it's undoubtedly the most beautiful game in my collection I think. Particularly from an artistic standpoint there are some absolutely stunning games like Townsfolk Tussle. I adore the sort of dark classic cartoony feel of the artwork but from an artistic standpoint I think Canvas and Canvas Reflections does stand alone at the top. And so let's have a look. Obviously the rule book is going to be relatively small because it is an expansion. Hopefully we're not getting too much of the glare like I did in the cellulose one, unfortunately. Uh, so the overview, paint from a new perspective. In canvas reflections, the artistic puzzle has a new layer, mirror cards. These reversible cards add deeper strategy and also give you increased flexibility to string together combinations of elements. Additionally, the new board provides players with a wider selection of art cards. This offers more choices even when you're running low on inspiration takens and allows you to plan further ahead. So obviously with the core game, the aim is that you have these transparent cards that you are layering to create a piece of art and then get the rosettes for the most beautiful artwork. These are, have got the same uh, transparent cards, but they've actually got the artwork so it's reversible. So you can manipulate it a bit more and have a bit more flexibility in terms of the art that you're trying to create. Uh, it is very, very attractive. So you've got the board, you've got where you put your scoring cards and everything, which obviously with the expansion of more cards is going to add far more to the game. Uh, there are a couple of little rule changes, not much. And again, some a couple of exceptions to the solo rules and things there. Masterpiece variant. The best in show ribbon is awarded to the player with the most points. Then each player displays one of their paintings and explains its meaning. As a group, discuss the artwork presented and award the masterpiece ribbon to the player with the best painting. The painter of the masterpiece and the winner of best in show share victory. Okay, that's interesting. And then we've got a variety of scenarios. So we've got some simplified family games, which I'm really, really excited by. I didn't know they were going to be there. And obviously with Alex, that could be very, very interesting to try. And then they've got other things for first time playing, focusing on what's new and then more complex settings. Okay, so these are gonna be some of the cards. So the two times icon doubles the icons in adjacent swatch that the arrow points to. This includes bonus icons. I'm assuming the swatch is something to do with scoring. It's probably in the base game rulebook, which obviously I haven't read yet because I haven't even opened the base game. But it's definitely a game I want to get on the channel as soon as I can, hopefully with Stace when we get back. Potentially even with Stace and Alex, given the, the family mode there. And I'm guessing these are the base player boards because obviously these aren't transparent. So it's just giving you the background and the colour palette to work with. Again, very, very beautiful watercolour artwork. And these are the focuses where you can get extra rosettes, which obviously just mix up and give a, a lot more variability and targets and objectives to fulfil. Uh, these are going to be scoring conditions as well. So you get extra rosettes for animals, for humanoids, per metal piece, per plant per wood. Nice. I don't know if they're double-sided. No. Uh, so shuffle the, the signature style cards and deal one to each. So that's another variant 
where you're just getting another sort of scoring condition. And, oh, I forgot, where did I put them? I did get a bit fancy with these and buy a whole host of wooden easels uh, off Amazon for, I think they were like £10 or something, just because I love, I know in the first game, I think they, were, they had wooden easels as an option where you could display the the pictures at the end of the game, but I think that I did read some comments that people said there weren't enough of them. So I went big. And they've been sat there for like 18 months while I've been waiting for this game. Uh, so hopefully they'll get plenty of use. And hopefully I'll get to see plenty more of these tokens, as these are obviously the gold rosettes that get han handed out. Uh, they are very, very attractive. It's really good because they like have a glittery effect, but they don't appear to be covered in glitter, which is a massive bonus because glitter just has a habit of getting everywhere. Oh, these are very, very cute, these little colour palettes. Look at those. Brings back memories of... Uh, being forced to sit down and watch Art Attack with Neil Buchanan in my in my younger days. My sister was obsessed with that show and he was very, very entertaining with good old Neil with a giant Art Attack and whatnot that he would do. Maybe he inspired these games, who knows? Never know, this might actually be a game where I can inspire my friend Kay to come and play on the channel because she has just started painting as a hobby and so I initially immediately sent her the picture of these arriving and she was very excited. Uh, we've got the Best in Show rosette, which is a proper badge. I mean, it's slightly out of alignment now, which is a little disappointing, but I mean, it's, it's a minor gripe, really. Especially when you compare it to the Masterpiece one, because the Masterpiece one looks like it is pretty much perfect. If I can get it out of these rather little bags. There we go. Yeah, that looks pretty much dead centre to me. A uh, bit of a scratch on there, though. I don't know if that's just a bit of glue that hasn't come off yet. Yeah, it looks like it. Just some glue that was still stuck, stuck on there. So that's come off quite nicely. Uh, but yeah, Kay was the one who suggested the, the name of the board masters and I've been wanting to get her over to play some games ever since it started and haven't been able to organise it yet. Obviously these are the cardboard tokens that are going to be in, in the retail version, uh, which all of these bits replace in the deluxe version. And we've got all these beautiful cards. I think I want to get this board out first. It's a much bigger board than I was expecting, to be quite honest. Oh, it goes that way around, so we've got, again, some more beautiful art with the, the koi carp and everything on there. But yeah, I, I'm a little overwhelmed by how big that board was. I did not expect a board of that size. Even in, in the rule books, it looked like quite a small one, but yeah, that is that is definitely caught me unawares. But it is beautiful, undeniably. But now let's dive into some of these transparent cards. And hopefully there won't be some glare. I know when we had similar things with Dead Reckoning, it worked really well. So I'm hoping we have the same thing here. So we've got Delicious and on the other side, Isolation. So you can see the double-sided on one side, it's, it's a sweet machine. On the other side, it's a goldfish in a jar. Uh, watching a scarecrow and then Duty of the scarecrow. So he's actively trying to scare the birds. Not doing a great job of it, mind. I'm not going to go through all of these individually, but Traversing and Guardian. Oh, that's really cool. So it's obviously a vehicle on one side and then like an Oriental Guardian statue. Got salt and pepper shakers. Uh, and then drinks. I mean, the refreshment was clue, but I was kind of looking at it in the same way as the salt and pepper shakers. So you can get an idea already of how clever these reversible things are. I mean, some of them 
are pretty much the same, just with a different theme, and other ones are completely different, which is really, really clever. Again, I'm not going to flip all of these. Fantastical and birth, okay. Hungry and death, Ooh, that is very, very different. Sweet, yeah, and again, you can see they're just basically different color sweets, so there's not much. Uh, so some of them are, I guess the themes and the colors and the icons at the bottom are, are gonna be combining together to determine what sort of mark you're getting and the art that you're, how your art is scoring. Distant, ah, visitor, so a, a planet and then an, a UFO, thoughtful thought. Colossal direction. No way this way here. Mm. So these are very, very, very attractive. I think that's just a pack of sleeves, so I'm not going to open that. No. So we've got time and then a broken clock. We've got evil and then I'm guessing a cherub. Good, yeah. Strategy and scattered. And you can always see already the way these layer up. I mean, half the time I'm looking at them and I'm seeing the tiger and an ice cream and thinking, how are they related on the same thing? And I keep forgetting myself that they're, they're layered up cards. Oh, that's really clever. So it's like a frog with a, a wizard's hat on one side and then a, a dropped ice cream cone. Serenity and volatile dive and floating. So spaceship it. War and tranquil. The beautiful doves or the fighter planes, the sunrise, or the view of Earth from the moon. And then a, a woman tragically at, looking like she's at a funeral, and then one on her wedding day. And that is everything as far as I'm aware. I don't think I've missed any hidden uh, hidden areas like I did in, in the cellulose unboxing. But this really is a spectacle of art and I am very, very excited to play this game. I'm so happy they did an expansion because I remember when Canvas was starting to fulfill when I'd missed the campaign because I wasn't really in the hobby at that point and I was desperately trying to find a copy anywhere and it was not in retail and I wasn't going to pay the hugely expensive secondhand market ones. And then they announced the expansion which included the base game in the, in the campaign. So I was over the moon. And... Yeah, just so happy to finally own this game. But that is everything that is in the box of Canvas Reflections. If you do want to see me do an unboxing of the base game, then comment down below and let me know, and I'll, I'll happily do that at some stage in the future. I know over the next few weeks I've got Return to Dark Tower and Monsters on Board, and what else is there? There's a bunch of other ones. My father's work, I think, is just on hold while they fix up the app and there are a few other ones that are in the country that are completely blanking on now but by the end of the month there should be another four five six games that i am receiving that are obviously going to be prioritized ahead of the the base game for canvas but i will do it down the line if people want me to uh, but that's it for this video so thank you very much for watching look after yourself stay safe and have a good one Bye bye now